Can you see them good? Can you see them good? Did I leave? There we go. Didn't wait long enough. Grace and peace to and welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is always good to be together, um, especially today as we have our celebration of Epiphany. Um, we'll get more into the, what that means a little bit later. But um, we do have some announcements we need to look forward. We have a lot fewer than we did a month ago. Thank you. Um, so a reminder for those on the staff parish committee, either current or those leaving this year, both uh, be present today for the meeting right after worship today. Hopefully that won't take very long. Um, you should have received a reminder, a reminder about that. Uh, also this afternoon, the Southside uh, Community Chorus is having their rescheduled concert uh, at 3 o'clock at the Presbyterian Church. The... Um, snow interfered with their previous date, uh, as it did a lot of people's plans for a lot of things. Our youth resumed their normal schedule this evening, so 5 o'clock for junior high and 6 o'clock for the senior high. Um, sheep resumed this week, and um, Bible study resumes this week. This study is a study of So Help Me God. It is looking at godly success principles. Uh, this has been put together by Susie Brack, and she will be leading this study. So I'm looking forward to being a participant in this for the next five weeks. You see, the other, um, the other uh, events and schedule things coming up on the calendar, don't uh, make, take it home, put it on your calendar, make sure you don't miss something important. Any others that we need to lift up today? Okay, just a reminder, um, I will be explaining some of you received envelopes as you came in. Hold on to those. I'll explain them later, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be part of our service later this afternoon, later this morning. It will be this morning, I hope, not this afternoon. All right, if there are no other announcements, let us uh, turn our hearts, minds, and spirits towards worship this morning. <clears throat>
Good, good morning. Good job. Uh, please stand if you're able for the call to worship. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. From, From everlasting, everlasting to everlasting, everlasting you are God. God. First hymn this morning is We Three Kings. be with you. And also with you. Will you join me in passing that peace? 
Our first scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Word of God for the people of God. God. So if the uh, children who are here would like to come spend a moment with me. Morning. So we just had a specific season, right? What what just happened a couple, like a week or so ago? Christmas. Christmas. What happens to Christmas? Get presents. Hmm. So right. So um, today we are celebrating a big word in the church we call Epiphany. And that is the day that we celebrate the arrival of the wise men to Bethlehem. It happened a little bit later. It didn't happen all at the same time. And they brought gifts, didn't they? They brought... They brought... What did they bring? What did they bring? Hmm. Frankincense, myrrh, and gold. Yes, very good. So they brought these gifts... Uh, to Jesus. Seems like bringing gifts to Jesus is a good idea. You think? So, um, what? So we need to go home and get our gold and frankincense and myrrh and bring that to Jesus, right? Anybody have gold, frankincense, and myrrh lying around at home? Do you even know what frankincense and myrrh are? See, we don't even have those things. So, what can we give? 
can give love, right? And that's, we can do that in the way that we sh- interact with others, the way that we, uh, we can show God's love to others. That would be a gift to Jesus. You're right. Um, sometimes giving our time, maybe. Um, helping in worship. You're helping in worship, right? That's giving to Jesus. See? Um, there's all kind. Everything we have, every gift we're given, every ability we have, every skill we have, we can find a way to use that for Jesus and give that. That's really important. And the gift and, and these wise men coming, these magi, that t- that shows us that. You know, they brought what they had that they thought was fitting for a king, and we can give everything in our life, um, which is also fitting for a king if we, th- if, if we believe Jesus is our king. So um, think about that. And think about maybe you know ways that you can use what God has given you, the things that you're good at. You know, if it's... If you're good at reading, we can use that. If you're good at music, we can use that. If you're good at, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things. If, if, if you really have a heart for people and want to help people, we can find ways to do that too. So there's all kinds of things we can do together as Christ's people, giving what we have back to Jesus. Lord, we thank you for these magi, these wise men who came. Came to give gifts to the new king. Help us give our gifts to the King each day. Help us know what it is we can, that we can give to celebrate who you are, not just in our own lives, but in the lives of those around us. Help us work together to share him with the world.
so you can get blood back in your legs. Please stand as you are able as we hear this reading from the Gospel of Matthew, beginning of the twelfth, beginning of, sorry, of the second chapter. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me, so that I may too go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went, and looked, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So this is the celebration of Epiphany. What in the world is that? Didn't Christmas end, you know, like a week and a half ago? Well, no. Um, <laughs> Epiphany is the traditional day in the church, of, you know, over 2,000 years of church history, that we celebrate the arrival of the wise men. It brings to an end the celebration of Christmas, you know, those 12 days. And it is a day that, that begins us looking forward into how we respond to this amazing birth of Christ. In some cultures, as a matter of fact, they don't get gifts until Epiphany. Wouldn't that drive our kids nuts? <laughs> but there are a lot of really amazing things to pull out of this story. I mean, these magi, kings, as they refer to in some translations. Okay, quick quiz. How many were there? Three. We don't know how many there were. It doesn't say how many there were. There were three gifts, but we actually don't know how many magi there were. Since it was plural, it was more than one. But other than that, we, we know nothing. Um, now, church tradition over the years has attributed three kings and given them names even, I guess because it's easier to talk about someone and easier to have them in the Christmas play when they have names. But we actually don't know. We don't know a lot about them other than the fact that they came from the east. Most likely Persia. And that means that we're almost definitely not Jewish. They probably were followers of another religious tradition, Zoroastrianism. Say that three times fast. Which uh, the closest modern analogy would be astrology. They studied the stars. Took meaning from what happened in the stars to uh, attributed that to world events. And astronomers have been trying to figure out what in the world these people saw doesn't really matter, um, but there was something in the heavens that told them a king was in Israel. 
So what's interesting is, is that these non-Jews from Persia or somewhere that direction received divine revelation from God about who this king is. For centuries, these, these magi and their predecessors had been, were looking towards the heavens to confirm their faith. And what they found was a bright star and a baby's birth. What they found was a king. What they found was that arise, shine, talked about in Isaiah. So God continues this tradition of not appearing to whom we think God should appear. God does not privilege wealth or power or race or nationality or apparently even faith. The Christ child, the star of the ages, is born in a lowly stable among an oppressed people. Remember, they were occupied by the Romans. Not among the learned or the affluent or even the, those charged with preserving the Jewish tradition. His first witnesses were shepherds and livestock and then spiritual pilgrims from a foreign land. The Epiphany celebrates God's generous and varied revelation among the people of the world. The religion of the Magi was far different from that of the Jewish people. But this was not some transform uh, well it was a transformative moment but it wasn't a conversion moment for these kings we he read nothing in here that they went home and became Jews there's nothing about the conversion of faith it says it, as a matter of fact it, it, it almost is like this birth of the baby expands their own faith God is known to them through relationship. Isn't that fascinating? We think somehow we have the hold on this magical knowledge. But maybe God works in ways we don't expect. Maybe instead of this being a big secret, God is working very hard to try and make this message of salvation and love known throughout the world in varied people from varied places. But these magi were guided by a star. We understand a lot more about the way the universe works than they did. But there is this conjunction, this congruence, this connection between heavenly and earthly, between divine and human. Kind of like these two worlds get mushed together in this story. And that's profound. That's just as true today as it was in the first century. You notice the Magi were also guided by a dream. After they went to Herod, they were going to go back the way that they came. You know, the, these were not just random travelers. These were people who knew how to travel. And so they would have planned their whole route before they left. They would have planned where they were going to stop. They would have planned how they, you know, enough provisions. They would have planned the whole thing. Anybody do that when you go somewhere? You plan everything, right? You know where you're going. You know where you're stopping. You know where you're eating. You know, you know where you're filling up. You, 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 you got it covered. But this dream changes their route home. How often does that happen to us? That God's word comes and changes our direction. They left and went by another road, it says. They went home another way. God changed their direction, changed their entire travel plans, throwing out everything they'd already planned to do. I think God does that. God directs us and tells us and what's amazing is that 
In my experience, when God changes our direction, God gives us the directions we're supposed to go. Sometimes we follow, sometimes we're too stubborn to do so. Because we like our plans. We feel like changing is a failure. But it's not, necessarily. Changing direction, even when we didn't plan on doing, may be God freeing us and allowing something new to happen in our lives. And the Magi's careful planning had to be revised in light of God's new vision that was given them. But that didn't happen until after they got there in the first place. So we can be faithfully doing an, an extension exactly what God has asked us to do, and then all of a sudden we're asked to do something different. But Lord, I thought you asked me to do that. Well, yes. Now I'm asking you to do this. But in the story, the Magi are not the only ones that have dreams. The whole Christmas story, we have Mary and we have Joseph receiving dreams as well. You recall that story. Well, immediately after this passage, Joseph receives another dream. In this dream, he is told to take his family and flee to Egypt because Herod has dire plans, which we find out later he does. In the slaughter of and the slaughter of, of innocent infants. So Joseph is urged to take his wife and his new child. Leave everything familiar. Leave their home. Don't go back to Nazareth. Leave their occupations. Leave their safety and seek security in a foreign land. That's what this story says. Like families throughout history and throughout the world, they depend upon their own resourcefulness and the kindness of strangers. Now, the world was different in Roman times, especially when Rome controlled most of the world. Nevertheless, that holy family coming to Egypt might have been viewed not so positively. Here they are, one more Jewish immigrant family to feed. Now, likely they moved to a Jewish community, finding people of their own background and own likes. That's what people all over the world do when they go somewhere else, right? Right? But they were still probably looked upon as outsiders. And considering Egypt was in a pretty tenuous point in their history at, at, at this time, probably were not looked upon favorably. The plight of this holy family is a reminder that sometimes people have to move. They were following stars and inspired by dreams. Just like those throughout the world that have to flee are often. Looking for survival, even. That's a tough journey. But what this story tells us, both the story of the Magi and the story of this forced migration of the Holy Family, is that Revelation of God comes in strange ways. Revelation of God can come from people we don't expect it to come from. Revelation of God can come through people of different origin and even different belief. It's kind of hard to take a moment, a, a, a Advice of belief from someone who doesn't believe the same way you do, doesn't it? That's hard. But I think if we keep our eyes on the heavens looking for the stars to guide us, 
beyond our comfort zones. We can discover and grow and encounter varieties of healthful, insightful religious experiences. We can find from others who aren't like us something new. It's so easy for us to become so wrapped up in our own experience that we fail to see the star in the night sky. Sometimes we think we have the secret and we think that so much that we're not willing for God to lead us to a deeper and fuller experience of who Christ is. Like Herod or any one number of other leaders across the globe at any given time, we can be threatened by that which we do not know, understand, that which we're intimidated by or annoyed by. We like to contain God in a box. Whether it's one of our own construction or whether it's one like mighty halls we build to worship. We want to control the power and it ultimately fails. Just like Herod's attempt to control power failed miserably because of the revelation of God. So instead, instead of being in fear, instead of, of, of trying to control what happens, let us be wise stewards of the marvelous, mysterious, wholly untamable gift of God among us, that gift of Jesus. I was discussing with the children, what gifts do we have to bring him? Probably not gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But we do have our hearts and lives. We do have the skills that we are given. We do have the resources we have been blessed with. All of these are gifts to God. And in giving ourselves to Jesus, we open ourselves to the boundless and amazing love and grace of God. No longer do we need to fear the other, whether that person is someone from a different place, someone who speaks a different language, someone from another faith tradition that's trying to tell us something, our neighbor who we might disagree with politically, oh my, or any combination of the above. We don't need to fear the other because instead we have a light, a star. That light is Jesus himself. Can you see him? Can you see Jesus wherever and whenever you look? Take to heart those words from Isaiah. Arise, shine, your light has come. The message of Christ is not a secret just for us. God's plan of salvation was expanded to the whole world at Christ's birth. Let us be anxious and excited, enthusiastic even, to share that with those around us. Using every available resource. Letting Christ himself guide us, just like that star led the Magi. So this month, um, we are focusing on something we call stewardship. It's, you know, somehow in some circles has become a more like a four-letter word, but that's not what the intent is. You may have received um, an envelope. If you didn't, we might have one for you. If not, we can get one for you. Um, that envelope in it has a card and a letter of explanation. Um, don't fill this out today. Don't fill this out next week. Pray over it. Look at it. Each week we're going to have somebody speaking about portions of what this means. This week I get to go first. 
But this is, this is an all-inclusive um, way of looking at everything we have been blessed with. Time, talents, treasures. These are the modern equivalents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, if, as the letter explains, um, the original concept of something called tithing was a 10% off first fruits of all yield was given to the temple. That is what funded the work of the temple. What fed the priests, it's what um, enabled the ministry to the poor happen and all the things that, that, that go on. Um, really, that's no different. Most of us just don't have wheat. I don't have wheat. So um, our 10% has become something different. Now, I know that is always a difficult thing. Um, it seems like a lot at times. But um, by way of personal testimony, let me share something with you. Um, last year, when we looked at how much we were giving, realized that we were quite a bit below where we needed to be. So last year, we took a step and increased our giving eh, close to 100%, doubling what we were giving to the church, thinking, we'll figure out something. Turns out, funny thing, not only has it not been an issue, we've had more money to spare than we ever had before. See, God does that. I think God's ability to bless what we are willing to share is beyond our comprehension. And so, um, by way of that, in our discussions leading up to this year, uh, we are committing uh, to another 50% increase in what we're giving for this next year. Trusting that what God is doing will continue. But it's not just about the money. It's about the time and the talents. It's about giving, working together and using everything we've been given. Those that cook, those that read, those that sing, those that can visit, those that can write letters. The, all of those things are amazing things that we can work together to, to make happen. Some have the gift of teaching that aren't teaching will talk to me. We'll figure out how to make that happen. Let's use everything we're given. Bring those to the table. Bring those to Christ so that what God can do through this place blesses not just this community but the world. Thank you. One of the most important things we do as a community is praying for those not just in our community, not just in this community, but in the world, larger world around us. With that, we need to be in continued prayer for those still in Indonesia with the um, devastation that is um, they're just unwrapping from from the tsunami there. Since last time we were together, there have been a couple of our members who have uh, moved to other locations. So um, Charles Young is at Hunley Center uh, getting some rehab to gain some strength back before he comes home. And Dan Wilson is now at Chase City um, receiving treatment there. Of course, continue to be in prayer for families of Jerry Klingenberg and Sterling Montague as they work through their own grief. Are there others we need to lift up today? Family of Ann Jones. Family of Ann Jones. Her service is tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. at the Baptist Church. Thank you. And the family of Aunt Ann Sterling, yes. 
They said, does it under the connection of Sterling Montague is Amelia Portress's brother. Jonathan Merrill. Jonathan Merrill. And Catherine Slayton. Catherine Slayton. Joyce. Kristen Hardaway. Kristen Hardaway. Joyce. John Randolph. John Randolph, yes. Gary Davidson. Gary Davidson. Your cat, Belle. They are family members, aren't they? The family of Ricky Hayes. Do ask continued prayers for our bishop. Um, she had hip surgery recently. Um, had a minor setback, and she continues um, recovering in Atlanta. So we hope to have her back soon. Celebrations. Sheep begins. Sheep begins again. Yes, it does. It may seem silly, but there is sunshine. <laughs> Did receive a positive word. Krista Walsh, who's been on our prayer list for a while, um, has ended her chemotherapy and is beginning the next phase of treatment. So that is a is a celebration that she got to ring her chemo bell. Any others? All right. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for all the lives that mean something to us. We thank you for those we don't even know yet. Because it is in relationship that you are known. So for all the names that we've listed, for those in far off places such as Indonesia or those right next door to us in our own neighborhoods, we lift them to you. We have someone recovering from illnesses or procedures. We have some undergoing long-term treatments. We have some grieving the loss of loved ones. For all of these lives, we ask your peace. We ask your comfort. We ask your healing. For caregivers and medical providers, we ask for patience and skill. And for all of us, we ask for your strength to allow us to continue to bless others through your love by giving what we have in your name, by sharing with others, by sitting with them and listening to them. Hard work to love others. We know this through what you did through Christ. Allow this celebration of incarnation and this celebration of these magi who came from afar to see you. Help that celebration strengthen us in our lives each day. Through that Christ we pray. Amen. Well, this table before us is Christ's table. It might look like one of ours, but it really is his. And this meal that is set on it is open to all who call Christ Savior, who would like to know that relationship better, who would like to work on that relationship with others. So when it is time to come, I would invite you to come forward and receive this holy mystery 
that we call the Eucharist. As we prepare our hearts for this, let us pray together. Creative God, you make all things new in heaven and on earth. We come to you in a new year with new desires and old fears, new decisions and old controversies, new dreams and old weaknesses. Because you are a God of hope, we know that you create all the possibilities of the future. Because you are a God of love, we know that you accept all the mistakes of the past. Because you are the God of our faith, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and praise. We come into your presence with gladness and a joyful noise, and we serve and bless you. Amen. Well, let's continue our celebration of all God gives us and all God blesses us with by receiving God's tithes and our offerings. Be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent the star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born, and in your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. In the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Brought your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now with the confidence of those who call Christ Savior, let us say the prayer that he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Bread we share, sharing the body of Christ in the bread of life. The cup we share is sharing in the blood of Christ in the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world, led by your light, the light of Christ. Give ourselves for others in his name. Amen. person of Jesus, let that love guide each and every one of us, each and every day, and let his light guide us to his love, that we can share it with the world.